Hello, my name is Howard Shapiro and I'm a volunteer with the Portland Sierra Club and I have a, with me a group of volunteers and we're going to discuss some things about the proposal by coal co corporations to ship coal from the Powder River Basin out of the Pacific Northwest in Oregon and Washington. I'd like to introduce, have, have us introduce ourselves. Roger, you want to begin? I'm, uh, I'm Roger Pressleaver. I'm a member of the Sierra Club and the Power Pass Coal Coalition. I'm Alice Shapiro, and I'm also a member of the Sierra Club, volunteer in the Power Pass Coal Coalition, and actually all four of us here are on the steering committee for that group. And I'm Carol Ross, and as Alice said, we're, I'm with the Sierra Club and Power Pass Coal. It seems that a little bit of background is in order here. There are coal mines, strip mines, in the Powder River Basin, and uh, the coal there are coal companies that, of course, are in the business of supplying coal. However, one of the problems is that the coal power plants in this country are quickly getting off of coal. They're going into natural gas, renewables, and so on. Uh, so the co these coal companies want to find a market to, to continue the mining and to their profits. That market is China and other countries in the Far East because of their industrialization. Um, in order to get the coal from the Powder River Basin to the shipping points, which we will go into later, they have to mostly run it by rail. And we'll discuss this a little further. One of the interesting points is one of these coal companies is an Australian company. Uh, there are many complications, many implications to the fact that seems relatively simple of shipping coal to Asia from the Northwest. And we'll be discussing some of those problems. One of the problems, of course, as I mentioned, is that the coal will be traveling from the Powder River Basin out to the Columbia Gorge. The railroad tracks in Oregon run along the Columbia Gorge, the pristine Columbia Gorge. They run on both sides, the Oregon and Washington side. This coal will be shipped in open coal cars. The coal cars have to be open because coal will spontaneously combust if it's covered. Uh, as a matter of fact, it does spontaneously combust quite frequently on the trip, uh, mostly along the tracks. These coal cars spill about a pound of coal every mile, and it's, oh, about 1,500 miles from the Powder River Basin to their destinations. And that's a lot of coal to fly out of these cars. Yeah. Roger is a picture of coal trains moving through Seattle and then one moving through West Virginia. One moving fr through West Virginia is um, especially interesting because it's, I don't know if you can see that. It Had has coal dust. Uh, all along the track. You can see how the coal is piled up along here. Yeah. And as it goes oh, yeah. along, it's just the whole area here is just black with coal So dust. what would you say it covers, it'll drift like a quarter mile on each side of... Oh, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. on each side of the tracks. And that, along the Columbia River, would seem to me that a lot of this dust will drift into the river. Right. <laughs> What's in this coal dust? Okay, and I, I um, am relying on also some of the words of 
people more uh, informed and very excellent speakers. For example, um, Andy Harris, who's a medical doctor and a member of Physicians for Social Responsibility, has spoken extensively. And I'm actually going to read some of the things that he said that have really impressed me the most. Um, and as he said, if coal companies have their way, there will be over 150 million tons of coal from the Powder River Basin of Wyoming and Montana, and they will be transported on trains and barges, as Howard said, through the Columbia Gorge, and they'll destined for Asia. The coal dust is a major health problem, particularly for people with allergies, asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and heart disease. Coal dust also contains toxic medical, meta, excuse me, metals <laughs> like mercury, arsenic, and lead. And as, as you mentioned, Howard, the coal trains, for a variety of reasons, primarily because they do combust, are left uncovered, and each car will probably lose a pound of coal dust for each mile that it travels. And interestingly enough, not even um, PGE, which currently operates Oregon's only coal burning power plant, does not want a coal export terminal next to their operations in the port of St. Helens. And they are actually destined to go off board to have no more coal burning in Oregon at all, um, but I think it's the year 2015. And it is a far worse problem for the lungs of asthmatics than it is for the equipment of PGE and for emphysema patients and for young children. Um, another health issue, if you want me to continue for a little while, is the diesel. The barges, the trains are powered by diesel to say nothing of trucks that will then transport the coal that is shipped on the barges to the terminals where, where it will then board the large ocean-going vessels for Asia. And the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, has classified diesel emissions as a major known carcinogen. Another thing that both Dr. Harris and Dr. Martin Donahoe, who is speaking extensively, are concerned about, and, and so are all of us, is the delay that will block emergency vehicles as these long coal trains go at 15 miles per hour through crossings. So these are just some of the, the issues, to say nothing of the mercury and arsenic and so forth that is contained yeah, in the coal Yeah, you mentioned emissions. the mercury and arsenic, so that's going to be in the coal dust that drifts into the river and yes. along the tracks. And it's going to settle in the river, and it's we have sturgeon in the, in the river that suck food off the bottom. We have salmon in the river right. that Oregonians fish and eat. And it's not going to be real healthy for them, is it? How, how <coughs> many proposals are there now and well, what works? There's one for starting north. There's one for Bellingham. There's one for, there was one for Grays Harbor, but the port commission at Grays Harbor has decided that they could put their port to better use for the few jobs that they're going to yes. get and the pollution that they're gonna suffer, they've decided they could do better than coal. So Grace Harbor is off the table. There's gonna be Longview, there's gonna be, the Port of St. Helens gonna have a couple. And of course, they want to have one way down in Coos Bay, which is gonna mean that the coal trains will travel along the Columbia River, through Portland, through Brooklyn Yard, come down through Salem, come down the Willamette Valley, into Eugene, head out to the coast, and head to, through some of those coastal towns. Beautiful West Lake yep. has the tracks going through them, and there are four or five lakes, fishing lakes and swimming lakes there. Coal trains are gonna be going by there, down to Coos Bay. So. And won't the train that's proposed to go up to St. Helens also pass through Portland? Yes. It's and North Portland? Yeah. Yeah, and that, it, that'll go right along Route 30. Right, Route 30. It's going right. to pass through Hood River, yep. the oh, windsurfing yeah. oh, yeah. capital. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so the windsurfers are going to be uh, surfing in yeah. the river with the arsenic and so on. Uh, and now the barges. Th there is another, the, the coal companies are pretty smart, so Ambry Energy decided that they're not gonna 
run that one of their proposals is to barge it the coal from Boardman it'll go by train to Boardman the old power plant that has a loading facility and be loaded on barges come out down the river to the St. Helens area and the barges are going to be covered the loading facility is going to be covered which is interesting because what if one of those barges catches on fire in the river? At the hearing, the DEQ hearing that we attended, one of the DEQ members was asked, yeah. the safety member, right. was asked, yes. what are the plans for if a barge catches on fire? And he said, we'll call the fire department. I know, that was That's sad. a great plan. So, um, Anyway, um, well, who will be on the other side of the tracks? Right. <laughs> right. Who's going to be? And get and there. isn't it so? Didn't um, one of the men who spoke at the environmental justice conference spoke about the idea that covered barges haven't been done? Nobody knows how, even how <clears throat> to cover the barges or what the effect will be. They haven't or, been made. Or where they haven't been made. No, and that it's but a that totally will totally experiment with the people of the Hood River and Columbia Gorge area. It's Which brings up another amazing. hook that the coal companies are using, the jobs hook. Yeah. Now, it's estimated that each of these shipping ports will hire about, have as about as many somewhat sustainable jobs as two Starbucks coffees. That doesn't sound like a lot of jobs to me. No. But they are going to give some money to the school district also, some of the school mm -hmm. districts. Uh, they're trying as hard as they about can. About a million and a half, I think. Something like that. That's a one-shot deal. That's you know? about what it costs to buy a nice condo looking over the river. Right. Yeah. And that's not going to go very right. far to solve no. any of the problems no. yeah. of the schools. And, and another issue was brought up in terms of jobs. There's, there's no estimation about the jobs that are going to be lost by local realtors. And, excuse me, not real, realtors as well, but well, retailers as well, the small businesses all along, because certainly in terms of especially the tourist industry and other small businesses are going to be affected majorly by the amount of trains passing through and causing noise and causing pollution and just interfering with people being able to get to the local businesses. So it's not, it's really, we don't know Right. There's a, there's a balance. Jobs are also going to be lost. Small businesses are going to be lost. I think we can also say that the jobs in coal are temporary. They are. No, the, the construction jobs, of course, would be temporary, but coal is on its way out worldwide. So the jobs there are not going to last if they lasted 15 years. That's right. That'd be, and and you'd be, we'd be left with a real major mess. Right. Yeah, most of us has, have read about the lung disease and the, the um, air problems they're having in Beijing and in other places right. in China. Right. And China is working very hard to get off of coal. Ali and I have been to China. We've been seen the Three Gorges Dam. It makes uh, wow. Bonneville look like a toy. <laughs> um, That's for sure. I mean, they've got locks as far as you can see. Uh, and it, the hydroelectric, I believe, accounts for about 3% of their, the energy that they use. China has, also has coal. Mm -hmm. Indonesia has coal. Just because our coal is being shipped overseas to them doesn't mean that they're going to have a, a viable market because they will be con competing with lo local coal. Right. One of the uh, one of the places that I've, I've heard that it could be shipped would be South Korea, and South Korea just finished a study in September showing that uh, South Korea has one of the largest wind potentials in the world. Wow! And that they plan to expend a great deal of money. Um, you know, developing this in order to get off of fossil fuels. So we're not going to be having these places to send 
Japan is another one. Japan is, is looking at developing wind power to get off both nuclear or Yeah, they don't nuclear like nuclear for obvious there. reasons. Right. Um, and they're working <coughs> on wind too. And you know, they, these are countries that as soon as they can get off coal, they will. Yes. And we know that China yeah. is manufacturing solar panels because, you know, there have been some issues about China's <laughs> solar panels competing with US produced solar panels, so we are trying to have tariffs so that China won't be competing with us. So I'm wondering, what, what do you think the Chinese are going to do with their solar panels if they can't export them? And if, if they have something like, what, 70% of their population has major lung disease, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, the Chinese are not, are not unintelligent people. They're going to be using their solar panels in their country. So the argument that, well, you know, if we don't give coal to the Asian countries, we don't ship it to them, someone else will, I don't think that's a viable argument because they are trying to get rid of their, they're starting, they're paying attention to their people. They can't afford to have their people, over 50% of their population, very ill with lung disease or other pollution yeah, related diseases. Do you see diseases? the pictures of the, you couldn't see yeah. no, to walk we've, there. Well, we have you've been, been, been there, there so we've that's been, a whole other you know, thing. Another thing is that most of the houses in fairly populous areas in China have solar water heating yes. on oh, their really? roofs. They so they yeah. So okay. they they have a g I mean they have a good toehold in renewable energy they and do. they are working to develop it. It's a large country and they do a lot of manufacturing and exporting and they do need the coal right now, but they're trying to get off of it. One of the other problems is if we ship coal over there, it stops their motivation or interferes with their motivation to get on renewables. And what happens, unfortunately, is that when they burn coal, yeah. if it's ours or anybody mm -hmm. else's, the coal gets, fumes get caught in the trade winds right. and blow across the Pacific and end up in Oregon. Well, there's a, a study, the latest, was from a 2008 study that found that Asian emissions of mercury, because they can trace where the mercury has originated, the 18 <coughs> contributes to 18 percent of the springtime concentrations of mercury in Mount Bachelor. And this as is from China. This yeah. is Asian coal. Back to Asia. Yeah, it's China and other Asian mm -hmm. countries, and we know that mercury is a potent neurotoxin. So it's it's incredible what how far what a small world we really do live in. So what we do here affects them, and what happens there comes right back <laughs> right. to the, us. What was that saying? A butterfly flaps its wings in Beijing and they feel it in right. New York or something like right. that. Right, <laughs> right. Now you had talked <coughs> about the, um, the Bellingham and yeah. the yes. port of Morrow. And now there's, and St. Helens has two. And what about Longview? There's another one at Longview? Yeah. Longview is on the map, and Coos Bay. And so Longview, right, right there across from St. Helens. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it's okay. right across the river. Um, and, and you know, one thing about Longview is that the town was built along the railroad when it wasn't okay. shipping coal. Right. You know, it mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. <coughs> a good means of transportation. I, I, the railroad helped this country build. And it's it keeps a lot of trucks off the road, and you know it's a a lot cleaner than a whole bunch of trucks spouting right. out it's more efficient. one one or two diesel locomotives yeah, pulling yeah. a mile long train is is a lot cleaner. So, but Longview was built along the tracks, and. I've heard, talked to people from Longview that have said the track split the town. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now, yeah. if there's mile and a half coal long coal trains running through the middle of town, what's that going to do to their economy? Yeah. And their health. Yeah. 
Might bring a few jobs to the coal terminal. And then the terminal itself at Longview, uh, is it like 48 million tons? I, I mean, I can't about remember million, yeah. every... I can't either. Well, you can't believe what they say anyway. Right. They went in... That's another picture here, this one. This is a terminal in British Columbia. They went you into Longview saying their initial proposal, I think it was Kinder Morgan, the initial proposal was for six million tons. And then some of their internal emails were in, uncovered saying that they oh, were going right. to go for 40 million right, right, right. tons. Well, they immediately, withdrew, they immediately withdrew that six million one and sandbagged. They sat back and the set one up, a proposal yeah. up for 40 million. And this is a good picture of it. This is the terminal at British Columbia, right. uh, Port Roberts, I think it's okay. called. And that was a really good this one, view of the uncovered <coughs> trains. Yes. This yeah. is what Longview would look like. Mm -hmm. Wow. Big football field sizes. Three of them, I think, are proposed about that long. A big piles of coal. And you can see that this is not covered coal. Right. right. So... So let me ask you all a question. Uh, okay. When we talked about the fact that this coal shipping scenario, because of renewable energy going on in Asia at the destinations, what happens to these huge plots of coal oh. that are in our ports when it is no longer profitable for the coal companies to ship the coal to Asia. Will the coal companies, do you think the coal companies are gonna clean them up? Or? I think it's gonna be taxpayer money that's gonna to go to clean up you know, another Superfund site. And who right. pays for well, the Superfund sites? One third sites? of all the developable property in Portland right now can't be developed because it's Superfund. Right. And you're right, what's gonna happen with coal? Way worse way more more of a mess i can tell you what's happened in west virginia is that's where you're from is yeah yes. west virginia roger and i are moved here almost three years ago now but um, i see a big smile on your face for some reason <laughs> <laughs> oh, well i'm real happy to be here in, in Cortland, but that's another story but in um you know, coal is almost gone in West Virginia now. <coughs> the, the seams are much thinner. Uh, coal companies are pulling out, closing down mines. And they're, they're leaving a mess. Yes. They just walk away from it. They're leaving a destruction of the Appalachian Mountains. They're leaving poisoned water. And they're just, they're walking away from this. Um, on our property there, there was a strip mine that they closed in the 60s and just completely walked, you know, walked away from it and left it, R ruined the water there and hmm. a real mess. They don't clean up their messes at all, just like all the people in Portland Harbor didn't clean up their mess. Yeah. And now it's the people that own the land now that have to worry about it and clean it up. I think also I wanted to uh, have us talk a little bit about passenger trains because oh, yeah. that's something we touched upon is that we, I really like trains as a means of transport because as Howard, as Howard brought up, uh, it's a much more efficient way. You can transport more with less fuel. And I like the idea of transporting people via trains, but Passenger trains, I, I didn't really know this until I started studying the issues more. Passenger trains um, compete for rail lines with freight trains, and freight trains, right, isn't this true, get precedence over yes, passenger freight trains. Gets precedence and I've heard, of, I've heard from people who travel on the trains, there are sometimes really odd schedules, like if you want to go across country, by trains, let's say by Amtrak, you probably have to board the train at 2 a.m. because right, otherwise right. the other times are being used to transport freight. And I have nothing against transporting freight if it's, you know, safe 
and, and not promoting ill health in the neighborhoods. But the more we allow corporate profit to use our rail lines for something that's going to damage our health, our environment, the less opportunity we're going to have to travel on passenger trains, which is a wonderful means of transportation. Yeah, I'm happy you mentioned yeah. that because there's a, uh, I have some figures from uh, ODOT and the Sightline Institute, which estimates the number of trains that are going to be coming through. Now, keep in mind, this is in addition to the trains that are right. already running. Right. And the trains that I am talking about will be a mile to a mile and a half long. There's going to be 10 trains to Bellingham per day, nine trains to Longview per day, six trains to Clatskanie per day, two trains to Coos Bay per day, and 15 barges from Boardman to Clatskanie <laughs> per day. Wow. Uh, that's a size, and this is all in accordance with the amount of coal that these coal companies say they plan to ship. Right. About 150 million tons a year. Yeah. Right. That's to meet their goals. We, um, what, one last thing that I think we ought to talk about, and that's that we shouldn't be thinking about coal at all. We shouldn't be worrying about the poison in it. We shouldn't be worrying about transporting it. We shouldn't be worried about breathing its dust because we have a much bigger problem. That's, that is climate change. Yes. And we need to leave this coal and other fossil fuels where they are and not be burning exactly. them. Um, in September, New York uh, had a conference and they decided that they were at real danger of storm surges. And they made arrangements to spend $2 billion to counteract, to uh, you know, adapt to mitigate these storm surges. And of course, they never got that because in October Halloween, uh, with the Sandy, right. they had a damage that cost fifty-six billion dollars in cleanup that the uh, Congress just approved the in January. That's so amazing. instead of two billion dollars, it was fifty-six billion dollars. And if we keep burning coal, it's going to be fifty-six billion dollars on a pretty regular regular basis. We have a website that's been up called ncadac.globalchange.gov. And this was uh, this is a website released by the United States government, our very government, saying this is unambiguous about the nature of global warming. Wow. It's happening yes. now. It's happening rapidly. Industrial emissions are the chief driver. And lastly, action is urgently needed. Okay, so I guess we can see that this is a very large problem. And I hope that we can do something in Portland to mitigate these issues.